Ngoya Sharis. Good evening. Welcome. Eric Osadala. Welcome. Bola Luru. Welcome. Bidemi. Good evening. Daniela Senga. Mufelola. Anne Marie. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Shah Smith, welcome. Today we are going to have an exciting program with uh, my daughter, my first daughter, Zoe Adelaja. I think she's the deepest thinker we have in the family. I like the way Zoe thinks because she goes deep when she wants to, when she's in the mood. And she's very deep. She's a very deep thinker. And so, but then she... She likes to relate with people and help people, and I think the book of today is going to help her do that. So the she, Zoe is going to be reviewing uh, and telling us what she thinks and what are uh, her views about my book, Who Am I? Why Am I Here? Who Am I? Why Am I Here? So that's one of my books that Zoe will be reviewing today. So can, can I quickly ask you to go and... Um, share the link already before we start because once we start going it's going to keep on going i will just let that flow and flow and flow and flow only you know only rarely will i stop her so we'll just keep on going and so uh yes please let's go ahead and share the link uh look for the share button under your video uh and you can share the link and write something there let somebody come and hear, uh, you know, this topic because it will help a lot of people. So once you have shared the, uh, once you have shared the link, then we'll be ready to go. We'll be ready to go. So, hi Zoe. Hello. Well, let me show you right here. How are you doing today? I'm doing very well. Okay. How was church? Church was amazing. Okay, tell us about it first. Let's start with that. Uh, what do you think? How was your day? How was church in general? Well, I got a well rest in today's, and even though it's not the first Sunday of the week of the month, today was anointing service because the first Sunday of the month was the first day of the year, and we had New Year celebration in church, and like a few hours were spent on praise and worship, which I really enjoyed. Uh, it, it a really, few hours? It seemed wow. like a few hours. Okay. A lot of time, a lot more than usual. Mm -hmm. uh, which I really enjoy because I really enjoy serving God with music and connecting God and relating with God. And then there were lots of testimonies and lots of performances by different people from the church. They sang songs and they told stories about how God has moved in their lives, which is very inspiring. And then you taught the sermon about how about loving God and how we don't have to work, clean up our, our lives or clean up ourselves. We just have to keep on working on striving to get closer to God and to uh, want to win His heart. And that's the most important thing, more important than how good we look, how good we are to other people or to ourselves. Closeness to God is the, is the basic thing. Okay, have you read this book? Uh, yeah, Kingdom uh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> Who am I? Why yeah. am I here? Who am I? Why am I here? You've read the book? Yes. So, what's your general? Before you begin to do uh, a thematic uh, chapter by chapter analysis, what what's your general opinion or what you thought first when you saw it, before you read it, and after you read it, general overview? I always wanted to read the book. I thought it was a great book that almost everybody should read because everybody comes across a question. Everybody comes across these questions. Who am I? Why am I here? Am I important? Would the world matter if I wasn't even born? If I was faded away? Does my life have any impact on this world? That's a very good point. So everybody should actually, everybody should actually think, will my life, will I have been felt if I'd never been born? Would the world ever have missed me? Or not? 
Okay, so I will just explain that again, if you don't mind. Oh, will the world be the same if I haven't been born? Does my name have, does my existence have any meaning in this world? And the answer, of course, should be yes, because then why did God make you and why did God put you in this world? God didn't just make you as a disposable person, as in you're just, you're not one of the others, just one of the wave. Everybody on earth should be individual and everybody on earth should have an impact and not a same impact, a different impact, maybe in similar directions, but they're all their own and they're all unique. So everybody that God made, God put time and effort and made you special so you definitely have a purpose and a meaning and you're not supposed to leave the world as is when you have come and when you have left mm -hmm. god gave you life god gave you time god gave you potential and talent and everything that you have god gave you resources god gave you love his love whether whether you're a believer or not so you obviously have power and you definitely have a purpose on this earth and so that's one thing about this book. I think so that's why you think everybody should read it? Everybody should read it. Everybody, especially if you're struggling. But even if you're not struggling, this will keep you prepared. This is what you need to know. I really loved reading this book because it kept on giving answers and answers. And this is knowledge that every person should know, like I said. And not, this is not knowledge anyone is born with. This is not people <laughs> don't know. You don't just wake up in the world and get to know these things. Yeah. <laughs> This is what you live and you learn, and you might not learn if you take the wrong con uh, conclusions from life. So this is the truth, and this is the right direction. This points everyone into the right direction. And uh, another reason why I liked reading this book, this book covered, this helps you find out what your purpose is. It doesn't just leave you like, this is what you need to know, go find it on your own. It aids you, it helps you, it gives you suggestions, gives you advice, and it explains things to you if you might not understand. So, so, when, so your dad is doing a good job <laughs> the way he writes. Yeah. <laughs> you, because a lot of books, a lot of books will actually stop at suggesting to you that, okay, this is what you need to know, go find it. <laughs> go re do research or go study or go find it anyhow you can. Mm -hmm. But you are actually saying that this book doesn't just do that. Yeah. That this book actually gives you the answer and the devices and the way. Okay. By the time you finish with the book, you won't want but you, to... You don't forget to be showing us once in a while for the book itself. Here's the book. Okay, once in a while you'll be showing us, okay? <laughs> By the time you finish the book, you won't, you won't want to look at the author and find him and ask any more questions. <laughs> because there are some times when you finish the book, you want to look for the author <laughs> to explain some more things to you, right? Yes. But here... All the answers are already there. <laughs> you don't need to go look for the author. Mm -hmm. You'll be sad and you'll understand everything. You'll have everything that you need to know. Everything that you didn't know, you'll be given to you. And it, the, the book makes you feel like the author really does care about each and every one of you because he knows that each and every one of you is a special, unique creation by God and you do have a purpose. It helps you in different ways. It gives different examples from different life stories so that, you, so that it gives proof. And it doesn't, the book isn't jaded, it's not boring. It keeps you intrigued because you really want to know and it really can give you answers and help you with your life. So that is my overall view of this book. So, should we get into the points? Yeah, in the review. The review? Okay, so first of all, who do, how do you define yourself? This is the first part of the book. Like, do you define yourself by your job? by your occupation, by your family life, if you're married, if you're not, by your gender, by your sexuality, by, what, by your citizenship, because all those things are not le legit. They all fade away. Like, if you identify yourself as a boy, you're not the only boy in the world, you know? <laughs> you, know <laughs> you know, some people will actually say, yeah, I'm a girl, I'm a boy. <laughs> yeah. But you are not the only boy in the world. <laughs> You're not the only one in the name that has a girl. You're not the only person named Zoe in this world. You're not the only black person. What makes you different? What makes you unique? And you can't say your character traits or your personality because that is not enough. And so through this book, through the first part of the book, you'll be scratching your head. What do I define myself? Okay. What does make me unique? When people ask you, who am I? What will you answer? What will you say that nobody else can say? Oh, I'm that too. Yeah? God made you special. And what makes you special? God put you on this earth for a purpose. 
So you identify yourself by your purpose. Your identity is in Christ, and Christ made you for a purpose. So what were you put on this world to do? What, what power did God give you that only you can do? That nobody else that's similar to you, that have the same name, the same gender, same sexuality and everything, but they can't do. What is something that only you can do? And that is your purpose that God sent you to earth to do. So that's the first point of the book. The first thing that they finalize in the book. Okay, your purpose, like I said, I've mentioned m multiple times, it helps the world move along. It m develops it and helps it. It's not selfish. It's not for yourself and it's not pointless. Your purpose has meaning and it is world changing. So yeah, it's important that you find out what it is and you get to it work right away. Now, to find out your purpose, you have to find out who, you're, who you are, and that is your purpose. But it does, it's not easy to be different from everybody else, to trust yourself and to trust God, to not go with the flow, to not do the same things other people are doing, to not be distracted by so many, so many easier things. <laughs> there are so many easy things out there. For yeah. For example, if you're good at math, but your calling is arts, math can be much simpler and easier because it's all logical, and it's straightforward if you're smart and you're good at math, but that's not your calling. Your calling may be art, and it's a lot more abstract and difficult for you. But you have to do that because only that, only you can change the world using that way. And nobody else that comes before or after you can do the same effect in this world that you can. And you can do it math like a cinch, and it'll be easy, it'll be nothing. But you won't even be satisfied because your heart wouldn't be in it. So you have to do, you have to find out who you are. Find out who you are. Don't look at other people who you think are who you think have it easy. Look at yourself. Look within yourself. What do you like to do? What is your passion? What have you always liked and loved to do? What do you think God is calling you to do? What do you think you can use to change the world? And this takes courage, perseverance, and determination because you have to be focused. And it takes a lot of hard work and a lot of pain. Term temporary. Temporary pain from the world. A lot of you can be outcasted by your peers. Your uh, your social status might fall a bit, but if you know how important it is to find out who you are, that will matter. It's all about the long run. All these people, they don't see far ahead. They're nearsighted, or maybe they already know who they are, so they don't care that much about your opinion. But you have to find out who you are, and you have to work towards it. And finding out who you are is the first step you have to do. So. Keep at it, pray to God, look inside yourself, what do you love, what is your passion, and work towards it. You have to write it down so that you won't forget, number one, so that when you write it down, it's more likely to happen because it makes it more final. Thoughts come and go all the time. If it's on paper, it's less likely to get lost. Mm -hmm. And studies have shown that when people write things down, it happens, most, most likely to happen. When you fulfill your purpose, you make a name for yourself in the world, for your peers and your family, people who know you, and for yourself. So that when you're in the crowd, when your peers, you won't be able to go with the flow. Because you are your own individual. In this world full of individuals, you are your own and you know who you are. There's an example my dad used about Ford and he asked for the cheapest hotel and he wasn't wearing very fancy clothes. And they asked him, what, why aren't you looking for the most... Uh, for the most famous hotel. For That's the, Henry Ford. Henry Ford. For the most expensive hotel. Your son always looks for the most expensive hotels. And Henry Ford said, My son thinks that he is defined by that stuff, by, by materialism, by how, how, by how rich the things he owns are, how expensive they are, and how hard they are to get. But I know who I am. I already made a name for myself. I don't need to prove anything to anyone. I already proved... An, I already proved to the world and to myself, and I already fulfilled my purpose, that so he already has a name for himself, so he doesn't need to prove anything to anyone. So make a name for yourself, find out your purpose, go after it, and fulfill it. Well, if you do, then, and you keep on fulfilling it, since you won't be done uh, just in one step or two. You have to keep working at it, and the world will respect you, and you respect yourself, and you'll be who you are. Okay. You, to fulfill your purpose, to find out who you are, you have to go from where you are now to a person who's capable of fulfilling that purpose. You have to work on your flaws. You have to gain some traits that you have not, you, you were not born with. Because you, you don't have to focus on your external case that much. It's temporary. It's like nothing.
will remember you not for your looks but for who you are. <laughs> Yeah, go ahead. For example, if you're called to be uh, to work as, at a daycare center, but you're very hot-tempered, you obviously have to work on your patience because you know kids can be troublesome and they cause messes all the time and they can drive you crazy. But if that's your calling, then you have to work on yourself to be more caring, to be more gentle, to be more understanding, to be more patient, and to listen more. It's hard work. You don't just find out your calling and go after it. You have to. The journey has to mold you and shape you into a person who's capable of fulfilling that purpose, which is why who you are is your purpose. Because who you are is a person capable of fulfilling the purpose that only you can do, that no other human on earth before or after you could or can do. <clears throat> we have to be not biomasses, but actual people. Because what separates humans from animals? Have you thought about that? Humans mostly, I mean, animals mostly live on instincts and emotions and reflexes. And we humans also mostly, most of us, mostly live on reflexes and emotions and mostly emotions. We, we, we do think, but we mostly let our emotions rule. We have to think a lot more. We have to be smart. It's not that hard. Just take us some time apart to think. How will your actions affect the future? How will they affect others? Is it really worth it? Is it important? You have to think about what can I do now that can help me with my future, with my friend's future, help me fulfill my purpose, help me become who I need to be to fulfill my purpose, and not be caught up in the moment of silly entertainment things. Not be angry. If someone, said, if someone pushed you, don't just push them back. Okay, if someone insults you, don't just insult them back. Mm -hmm. Have to contain yourself and resolve and be smart. Because you know that life is so much more. Don't ruin friendships over simple things. Every great person, every person in the world who goes after any goal, goes through some difficulties. This purpose is your life goal. So obviously you'll go through your hardest times ever. This is, this will, these will be the tests for how determined you are. And, and this will get, and going through the rough times will mold you into who you need to be to become, to fulfill your purpose. So we shouldn't be afraid of, uh, of difficulties. You shouldn't be afraid of obstacles, of troubles. You should face them head on. And when you fail, you get back up and you learn. And you don't say this isn't, this is a, you don't take it as a sign. You don't say this wasn't meant to be. You take the failure and you see what you learned from it. You look, keep a positive attitude and you keep going forward, being smarter and wiser. So you should be thankful to faith your life to God for making you smarter and wiser. So be thankful for the failure. Yeah. I will, well, I'll say that again about uh, the biomasses. And because you asked the question, I know you answered, but I want you to underline it again so that people don't miss it. You asked the question, what do you think is the difference between uh, the animal uh, and, and people? Because especially since people and animals have instincts and reflexes and things, but you mentioned it that because people still think that's what the animals can do and we can consider things and we could have purpose unlike the animal. But so, will you say that part again, please? <clears throat> Science compares animals to, and humans. Some people think that we evolve from the same thing as animals, but humans are very different from animals. We can dream and we can think. Humans took over the world, no other animal did. No matter how much they say that orangutans are like 99% similar to animals, but they're still 99% similar to humans, but they're still vastly different from us. We are made in God's image and likeness. We have the breath of God. No one, no other creature had the breath of life. Right. Only we did. God made us all individual and unique. Okay, we have emotions and we have brains and we took over the world, but we have been, we too, care too much about society and we live too much about how other people live life. And we don't think for ourselves. We think that the world already thought for us. So. <laughs> We think we're already the best that we can be, and nothing more can be invented since the best already existed, right? Einstein already existed, no one can be better than Einstein, but that's not true. We have new, better people than Einstein being born every day. We have to not focus too much on the present many school things, minor things that don't matter. We don't have to push back just because we feel like it. We don't have to insult back just because we feel like it. We have to keep our emotions under control and know they're not any they're not everything. Our instincts and reflexes and emotions. We have the power to 
go against them and to live by so, our own will. So to rule over emotions and instincts? Yes. And actually live by purpose, by our own will yes. as humans rather than... Unlike animals who just, all they have to go on is instincts and um, reflexes. That's all they have. They don't have anything to think about besides that, besides how to right. kill and to live and shelter and everything. But we're more than that. We all know that being called an animal is an insult to us humans. So we mm. can't start living like animals. We can't digress. We can't. So, so when any person... And any person <laughs> reduces himself to living or to acting just by instincts and reflexes uh, and uh, no, you know, stimulus, that means that that person only uses the same functions or uh, functionalities or instruments as animals, which makes him us the same as animals. But for us to be human, we must do all those things that you are saying. We must do take a step above and over. And it is what we do, how we do differently with our mind, with our will, with our decisions, with our goals and purpose, that really makes us to be human. Otherwise, we reduce ourselves from where God put us on top to just become like any other animal. But so few people know this. Yes. For example, like I said in the beginning of this broadcast, all of us ask the question, who am I? Why am I here? Okay, that's already being human. But most of us shy away from the questions because it's too heavy. It's too deep. <laughs> we don't understand. It's like, why do I have to think about this stuff? They shy away. It's too awkward. Like, who you will talk about it to? Like, I don't need a psychologist. Okay, I'm fine. We don't need this stuff. But we do. This Once we answer these questions, how we go above these questions and find answers, we will be enlightened and we'll be able to rule the world. <laughs> <laughs> That's an expression. We'll be able to ex change the world, to affect the world, and we won't be forgotten. We won't be washed away. That's everybody's fear nowadays, to be forgotten. Everybody's fear is just like, you'll be born, and you'll live a life, and it won't matter. But that doesn't have to be. That was never the plan. God gave you birth, God gave you life, so that you will live, and you'll be remembered for doing something, for changing the world. Not doing something that only in your lifetime, but doing something that generations after you will remember. Brilliant. Brilliant. Okay, <laughs> um, we have to, once we find out our purpose, like I said, we can't go there right away. We have to work on ourselves, work on our character traits, our qualities, and not so much in our appearance. We will go through, <laughs> we'll go through rough times, and we have to stay optimistic and take the right conclusions from them. Not the wrong conclusions, but the right conclusions. And you all know what the right conclusions are. Don't say you don't know. You know right from wrong. And you know the right conclusions that you need to get you to your goal. The right way. No cheating. No evil. Okay? But, but, but the gap from where you are to where you need to be. And you have to discover your potential. You have to know that you have what it takes to fulfill your purpose. And to become who you want to be. And to get from where you are to your purpose, you have to develop your tools. Your tools may be your gifts. You have to develop your gifts. Set apart time to work on your gifts, to become better at, who you, at what you need, at, what, uh, uh, at your gifts. You have to find more resources, get more connections with people, practice more, do what you have to do to get better and to, to develop the instrument that you need to get to where you need to be. And this will require a lot of hard work, a lot of rejection from other people, a lot of isolation, a lot of focus. And it's not pretty, it's not exactly fun. You might look at all the media advertisements, how people like have parties all the time, have fun, and you're like, maybe I shouldn't be doing this. Don't doubt. You will doubt, of course, it's inevitable. But don't lose your focus. Don't forget why you're doing all this for. This is your soul being, this is your soul existence, your soul purpose for existence, to fulfill your purpose. If you don't fulfill your purpose, then why did you exist? Your greatest fear will come true. Then you're just born, and then you get washed away, and nobody will, forget, will remember you. You don't want that. Nobody wants that. All of us have a desire to be remembered and to mean something. God put that desire in us. And the desire could be a fuel for you to work through the nights sleepless, work through the nights without thinking about the other people having fun. Because you know that in the future, they won't be having so much fun. Not as much fun as you'll be having when your work pays off. So keep on developing in your gifts, and get what you need to get to where you need to be. 
have to work on yourself intellectually, spiritually, and physically. Don't just think because my area is in math, I don't need to think about my physical condition. Don't need to think just because I want to be a boxer, you don't have to be like intellectually smart. Be the best you can be in every area because every area will aid you in getting to where you need to be and to making your impact on this world even better. Do what you love, do what you do, that you would do without getting paid and do this until you die because that is your soul existence. <laughs> something that you will do until you die. Something that you have passion and love for. <sighs> okay. We have to be showing the book sometimes. Here. This English version of the book. Imagine like Toya and something else. Mm -hmm. Faster Sunday. <laughs> Adelaide. <laughs> okay. If you still don't know what your purpose is, just because you don't know what it is, is not an excuse that doesn't have to be fulfilled. Don't just think, my purpose will go to someone else. Just because you are not working on it, just because it's not happening, doesn't mean it still doesn't have to be fulfilled. It's still your responsibility. If, if you ignore something, the problem won't go away. So this is your destiny, this is your goal, and it has to be fulfilled. And you won't find your purpose from other people. No, nobody will tell you what you were born to do. Have to look inside yourself and have faith and ask God for help. And he'll show you and tell you what you need. If you don't fulfill your purpose, if you just go with the flow, then you'll just be a part of the world's uh, machine. You, you'll be a part of the world's play. You'll be like a puppet for the world, for the government, for the people. You'll just be another one of those gears in the, gears in the machine. So this reminds me of something that Alan Watts said. And a little, Alan Watts is a, is a philosopher. He studied lots of different religions. And... And one, of, and one of his speeches is like music and life. And it's about how if we don't have a certain purpose, then life convinces us and tells us that there's something in life that we want. Let's say it's success. People say that if you uh, finish first grade, you go to second grade, second grade to third grade. Then you finish high school and you go to college because if you keep on going on this journey, you'll finally get success. you finally get what you want, what you like your purpose for living, right? And then you get a job, and you high paying a job, and then people tell you you're here, you have success, congratulations. But you don't feel all that different. You feel exactly the same, because it was all a hoax. It was a joke. They just used you, and you just played to their little song. You played to their little flutes and little music, because you didn't do what you had to do, your purpose, what you wanted to do. You just went with the flow, did what you were told, and you didn't once question it. And even if you did question it, you didn't go on it. You didn't stem from it. You just asked questions, but you know, avoided them because it's too deep. Okay, so trust your inner self. And, and once you find out who you are, what you like, what your purpose is, embrace who you are. Don't be ashamed of who you are. Why would you be ashamed of who you are? Every person is wonderful and beautiful. And besides, God th th took the time to make you individually and he 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 to give you a purpose. Don't be ashamed of who you are. Don't try to imitate other people or try to be other people. Because you are your own unique and you won't be better than the actual person that you're trying to imitate. <laughs> okay. When you have a goal, your body will create, will create energy to fulfill that purpose. Because you'll probably be excited and you'll have determination and willpower to, to fulfill the purpose, to fulfill the goal. But to get to the goal from where you are. You have to create structure and you have to be organized. Find a, find a path and you have to be like structure. How will you achieve your goal every day? <coughs> every day. <coughs> For example, you want to be a writer, right? Some person, a few people write like 10 pages a day because they want to practice being a writer, to be better at writers. If you want to be a singer, some people sing like three hours a day, but do something that could bring you closer to your goal every day and make sure it's structured and organized. Write down a list of from where you are now to where you need to be, and it has to be step by step, A, B, C, D, and then find out like how much time will this take, adjust the times to make sure it's reasonable and you can do it. And you have to take those steps every day, because every day you don't do something that brings you closer to your goal, that is a day wasted. Pretty much a day where you didn't live for your sole purpose, a day that you didn't exist. But if you don't know what the future holds, if you like have a vague, a vague idea of your purpose, then trust God and trust yourself, because you will know. You might not know the exact steps. Nobody knows what the future may hold for them. But you know your purpose and go 
Go towards it. Move forward towards it. And then God will guide you. And you will guide yourself since it's in yourself. You were born with this knowledge, but you were born with the knowledge of your purpose. You were born with passion for something. And you were born with love for something. So that will guide you, if anything else. So have faith in God and trust yourself. But of course, you have to research about it. You might know what you want, but you don't know everything about it. You have to go the extra step. You know, take your own stuff, do your own work, and research it. Research stuff about it. How can I get, how can I become this person? What qualifications are needed? And find out more about it. If you just know one thing, you might know so much about it, but there might be a whole another world about this one subject or one topic that you want to be. And you have to find out how to get there and find out almost every aspect, every area about it and how you can affect the world from that aspect, because there are more than one ways you can affect the world through one uh, aspect, through one area. Now, if everybody that is watching this, if you don't mind, I think it might be a good idea for us. I think it's not. this is not just a, ch a, a child's talk anymore, and this is not just for children. I think we should all go ahead and make a copy of this, get a copy of this message. And the way to do it, just look under the video, uh, and you will see in your device a button that suggests to you how to uh, copy, how to copy and get a copy. Just share it. Just go ahead and share it and write something on, uh, when you share it. Write some and words of encouragement. Write some notes to uh, your to your to to the, your viewers or to your friends. So let them just be aware that uh, you know this is a very serious business here, and it could help even your children or you know your friends or other people that might be on you know on your platform. So um, this is getting very very deep. This is getting very very deep. So uh, please, uh, let's go share the link. Let's go. If you have not yet shared the message yet, go ahead and share it. Will you show us the book again a little bit and tell us? Tell us. You know, name the, the name of the book. Who, who I am? Why am I here? Sandhya Dalaja, best-selling author of Church Shift. Okay. English version. Originally it was written in Russian. And within the first page, it's like, please excuse any errors since I wrote this book in Russian, like I've written most of my books, over 200 books in Russian. Yeah. Okay, like I said, research about your goal, about your aspect of life. And uh, this reminded me of a quote I've heard by Mark Twain. I never let my schooling interfere with my education. Mm. So school might not teach you about some stuff you want. For example, you you have to wait until college or university to learn some things. You can, you can stay at home. There's so many things on the internet you can learn. Like all the parents always like, you children have it lucky. You have the internet. Back when I was young, I didn't have the internet. I had to go to the library. La la la. la. But we have it so much better, and we have to take advantage of what we have. And this is a great because there's self education. And there is education by other people. <clears throat> and <clears throat> self-education is probably going to be more successful since you're, if you're doing it by yourself, you obviously have a drive. And you're obviously going to want to do it. So don't let uh, schooling interfere with your education or any other thing. Don't let, any, don't let schooling be an excuse, okay? Because schooling is supposed to help you anyway to, to do what you want you to do. It's supposed to help you fulfill your purpose. But if it doesn't, then take it into your own hands. Mm. Don't let anything stop you. And um, there's another emphasis on how hard this will be to keep your focus because it doesn't happen in a day It might take years. It might take decades, but you have to keep at it It might take like your whole life Maybe you'll only fulfill your purpose by the end of your life But it will still be world changing mm. and it is still your purpose You have to be constant you have to be decisive you have to keep pushing on and you have to, and it'll take a lot of hard work when there seems about the rough times that we said about failure, sometimes there'll be times when it seems there'll be no way out. Sometimes you'd be at your lowest point in your life and you don't know the answer. But you can't give up because you know that this is the only reason, mostly the only reason you were born. Always remember that morning will come and the sky is still blue and God is out there and he's got your back. And if God has your back, then no one can stand against you. And if anyone tries and dares stand against you, they definitely won't succeed. They definitely won't win. You are on the winning side because God is with you. And no one is more powerful. Nobody is more almighty than God. So remember, you can do it. And keep pushing on and persevere through. Okay. On, 
your journey to your goal. And even if you got to your goal, don't lose your values. Don't let, get, don't let greed get the best of you. Don't forget why you got here. Don't forget your roots. And on your way there, don't lose your focus and keep working at it. So the book suggests for you to have a set of values and beliefs before you're 18. Because most of the time when you're 18, that's when you leave your parents' house and you're thrown into the world, the real world, the big bad world. And that's when you can get like swept away with everything and lose your morals if, if your morals weren't strong in the first place. So you have to have roots. You have to have a set of beliefs and values, uh, like a code of life, a personal code of life that you live, that you won't compromise for, that you'll never break. And, and you'll only like change if you're proven, if you're proven otherwise and you convinced that it's better for you. And you always have to have a backup, backup and proof and reasons for your list of values and beliefs. For example, some values of belief can be like, what are the most important things in your life? Some people can say, my most important thing in my life is family and love, and I'll really respect and value honesty and consideration and kindness. And if these are your things that you won't compromise, that you won't trade, and you will never break, it's very important to have this rooted deep inside your soul, so that when life gets tough and people double cross you and they make you want to turn ugly and evil, you will stay strong and your mind will be clear because this is your code of life and you will be on the right track. So you have to have a good moral, a good moral set of beliefs. <coughs> Um, don't forget, your purpose slash your calling is what you want to do. So people tell you to do one thing because you're good at it, but you don't want to do it, then it's not your purpose. If your purpose is something that you want to do, then you obviously will... You will why wouldn't you want to fulfill your purpose? It's something that you love to do. God put that love inside your heart and soul and being into doing it. There's been a, like, a fact. People, people who don't go after their purposes... People, people, people who don't go after their callings get different jobs, but their calling, they do it as a hobby. But it's been proved, there have been statistics that people are more successful at their hobbies than at their jobs because they have more love and passion for their hobbies, something that they've always been drawn to. Some, and if you're still struggling to find out what is your purpose, it could even be something that you hate because of how much potential it has and it's not being used to full extent. It can be something that you hate because I'm going to stop you. If you don't mind, could you, when you are talking, because you are giving so much information out, uh -huh. is it possible for you to uh, categorize everything you are saying in the sense that uh, if you, maybe you are going to say chapter, this is chap for, sh chapter one or chapter two, or this is first part of the book, I'm um, not right now in the first part of the book or the first three chapters or the first something. Or you could give some questions and say, okay, how do you find out? So that you help people to orient. So either you give a topic, title of the things you, you, you are the things you want to, of the area you are examining or chapters or titles. Just say, I'm going to another point now. Or at least give us some numbers or say next, next point or mm -hmm. the next idea so that you know, people will be able to separate each point from another. Okay. Thank you. So another way for finding out what your yeah. calling or purpose is, like I said, it could be something you've always been drawn to. It could be confusing it as a hobby. And it could be something that <clears throat> you hate and it hurts you because you love it so much and it's being mistreated by the world and it's not being used to its greatest potential or how it should be treated in the world. So this is like a, a list of a way of getting to your goal to your purpose. Like I said before, make a list, a specific detailed list, everything that you need to get to your goal and set the time. <clears throat> about, um, like I said that God, about your purpose and calling and like knowing what it is. Like I said that God puts the love and purpose of it into your heart and soul and being. And I have a quote by a singer. When she was only 17, she already became a uh, sensation and this is something that she said I always knew since I was really young that I wanted to sing I was just born with music in my blood and I just wanted to do music so bad I feel that everybody when they're young have something that they want to do they want to spend their whole lives on doing and and God put that in you you have to follow it and don't just put it as a hobby or something that's like just just to like just when you're stressed out that's what you use to like events this is 
Something that God put in you that you can change the world with. It's a powerful weapon. Um, <clears throat> now to get to, to your goal, you can't do this alone. Okay, we already have God on your side, but you still need people's help. That's why we have each other. We're, that's why we're not in isolated worlds. That's why uh, God gave Adam Eve. We need each other. We need partners. We need teammates. And we, we have to um, support each other and help each other because we are human. And though we're better than animals, we still make mistakes. So we have to keep on like serving, looking to God first. And we keep on remembering that we cannot do anything alone. But if, if someone on our team made a mistake, we can't, um, we can't like completely blame them because it's a team. And if you have a team, you have to look over their work because there's always room for human error. So, so make sure that you do quality work by checking other people's quality also. Um, another way to get to where you need to be is to be an opportunist. Opportunist? Opportunist. Opportunist. Uh, there are always, uh, there's always chances and opportunities, and usually they're like, they're not always like big and loud and flashy. You have to look for them and dig for them and be careful, look carefully around yourself, because there are always opportunities and chances for something. Maybe they don't seem like anything big now, but in the future they may come in handy. So like grasp anything that you see in sight, because you need to like take as, get as much as you can and you affect the world as much as you can and show, spread your purpose through as many ways as possible. Don't just stay, don't just stick to one frame, to one way. You affect the world in more than one ways, then you'll be known for even a, an even greater way, an even bigger name. Okay, now this is the third part of the book that my dad is talking about complexes and uh, things that, how we stop ourselves from fulfilling our goal. Um, dad called these complexes that trap us in the past and keep us from becoming who we are meant to be. Complexes can be like summed up as psychological effects from our childhood that have carried into our adulthood or teenagehood and stop us from taking chances or believing in ourselves or they have different side effects. Though, for example, we don't, we cannot rely too much on other people. We have to be more independent. Like I, like I said in the previous, uh, in a few points before, we can't do anything alone. Of course, we need teams and partners, but we can't rely completely on other people. We have to be our own people. It's who we are, not who I am as a person, not who we are as a team. And we have to be independent because God gave you a purpose. And you people in your team, they have similar purposes, but they have their own purposes. <clears throat> uh, uh, to rely on yourself and don't be too reliant on others. Be more independent. And I have a quote, and it's from a show that I used to watch, and it said, if you want real happiness, you have to find it for yourself, not wait for someone to give it to you. You have to, you can't rely on others for the most important things. Like I said before, you can't rely on others for your purpose. You can't rely on others to give you all the answers. You have to be independent and get there mostly on your own, but with others' aid and help. Another thing, most people don't get to where they need to be, because of the fear, the fear of failure. But like I said before, failure only makes you stronger and only opens your eyes to make sure you don't make the same mistakes again. And again, it makes you stronger and it lets you see how to get to where you need to be in more ways than one. You try one way and then go another way. You try that way and then go another way. Because no, no matter what, there is a way to get there. Motivation for success is stronger and greater than the fear of failure. If you really want to be successful, to fulfill your goal, to fulfill your purpose, to like make God proud and change the world, you will overcome your fear of failure. Like I said before, failure is necessary for success. When, when you conquer your fears, you get a higher self-esteem and you become more positive. But if you don't ever face your fears, <laughs> then you'll, in fact, your, your self-esteem will decrease and you'll be feeling more negative emotions. So, and these are some complexes that most people go through. Criticism 
another co- this is another point. Criticism builds character and helps with controlling emotions. So don't be scared of being scolded or punished. It helps you become a better person. It helps you not make the same mistakes again. <coughs> of course, they hurt and they're not pleasant. Nobody on earth enjoys criticisms, but we have to appreciate the person for being helpful and take it to heart and change ourselves so that we can be better at achieving our goals and interacting with others and not making the same mistakes. It's like failure. Failure brings criticism and that it helps you change. Um, another complex is people with low self-esteem, they just become one of the many mass, one of the many people. One of, they go with the flow. Biomasses. Yeah, biomasses. They don't care about themselves. And that is a shame because you have great value. But people with low self-esteem, they don't care what happens to them. They just go with the flow and they get easily influenced because they don't care. And they think that maybe if they go with the flow, they'll be accepted and people look up to them and like them. <clears throat> but you have to, if you have low self-esteem, build your self-esteem. Prove to yourself that you're worth something. Look at all the things you can do. Like I said, everybody's born with a passion and a purpose. So look at your purpose and look how good you are at it. And if you're not good at it, then work at it. And make yourself proud and prove to yourself and make reasons for yourself to have a high self-esteem, to love yourself, to respect yourself, to be proud of yourself, and to be an individual and not like everybody else, to care about what happens to you. Be decisive, and don't compare yourself to others, because everybody's individual, everybody's unique, which means nobody is the same. <sighs> okay, and the last one that I think is really important, I think is the biggest one, this is like the mentality of winners and losers. Don't be a sacrifice or a victim of life. People are born in different families, some rich, some poor, okay? Some people don't get the chance of education. But that doesn't stop, if you really want to fulfill your goal, your purpose, that doesn't stop anyone who has the motivation for success to get to where they need to be and fulfill their purpose. There's a person who didn't get, go to school and he was poor. <clears throat> he became one of the best mathematicians and scientists and everything. Mathematicians and scientists in the world. And, it was proved, and his theories, a hundred years later, were proved to be right. So if you really want to fulfill your goal and for purpose, make sure you come out on the right side of life. Don't let life dictate if you're a winner or a loser. You dictate if you're a winner or a loser. You find your way around it. Let me give you, you clear. You can get some water, clear your nose, and uh, get some break while I comment and I encourage people to uh, read, uh, to share the link. <laughs> we are all under cold here because it's like 20, over 20 degrees here in Ukraine. One of the coldest in the past 120 years. So we are all battling some, some cold. So I'm sorry for that. But um, the, so if you have not yet shared this uh, message, please go and look for the share button. And uh, the book is uh, Who Am I? Uh, Why Am I Here? So uh, go and get your own copy. Uh, I, if anybody has Shoma's Shoma's uh, telephone, please put it there. People could get the the book from Shoma in Nigeria or from uh, Edwin or from Bade. So put their telephone numbers there if you. Yes, please. <clears throat> and the book ends with, if you, you have to find out your flaws in your mentality, if you have any of these complexes, like if you have low self-esteem, or you don't believe in yourself, or you think you don't have a purpose or a point in this world, or you were destined to be a loser, to find out your flaws, your negative thoughts about yourself, and reprogram your mind to think like a winner, and to know that you have a purpose, and you're put here to do something that no other human can do, or no other human will, will be able to do and keep, find out your goal, and look at these books and everything you learn from this book, and get to where you need to be, and change the world. Okay, uh, will you tell us again about the three, how are the books divided, and tell us the difference between each part again, so that, you know, and you remind, just give us a general summary, short summary of each part. So part one talks about this, part two talks about it, part three talks about it, so that when people are going to be watching this again, they will know when you go from one point to the other and how they could relate that to themselves, please. The book has 17 chapters, 
and it has three parts. The first part of the book explains the importance of finding out who you are and finding out that you are defined by a purpose and finding out the importance of your purpose. And it's like the first three chapters. The second part of the book is the rest, half of the book, is about half the book, and it helps you find out how to find out your purpose. Like, it's, your purpose is what you love, it's your passion, something you're always drawn to, something that you would do for free, something that, and the, <clears throat> and it also helps you, like, uh, find out who you are, like I said. The third book, the third part of the book helps you get to where you need to be, it gives you advice, the third part of the book gives you advice, gives you, like, practical, um, practical tasks to do to help you get to where you need to be, find out where you are, what you need, and also explain some common complexes of people that holds them back from being to where, from even trying to achieve their goals and lowers the self-esteem. Okay. Um, what does this book, what are the things that this book reminds you of? Or what other books or what other things in life? What does it tell you personally? Or how do you want to learn from this book? Or what would you like to do with it? You know, what are the things that you want to share with us? Maybe personally, or how this book could, you know, be a blessing to people. This book, while reading this book, the only thing you, I, or anyone else can think about is like, am I fulfilling my purpose? When you read this book, you know that the only you you know that the only reason you're alive, your only purpose is to fulfill your purpose. So I'm thinking a lot about like, what am I doing to fulfill my purpose, and what am I going to do to fulfill my purpose, and what is my purpose, and all those questions. And like how people around me have fulfilled the purpose, what they're doing, and everything. And I thought about like how I have lots of gifts, and I, my number one purpose is to sing, to sing for God. And um, there are lots of different genres, lots of different ways that music is made these days. And I love all of them, and I want to learn more about them and how to how, how I can like be a singer that can be listened to by more than just one type of people, by different types of people, mm -hmm. different areas, Christians and non-believers, and like people who listen to this genre can also listen to my music if they listen to different genres, can be played in different radio stations. And like, even like in Japan, they have a thing called Vocaloids, that's like electro electronic music, electronic people that are singing, not actual people, but it's still a type of music. So like any type of music. And there's like another one that's like, the, their faces aren't known, but like they have like animated versions of themselves. That Is that also in Japan? No, that's that was in America. Okay. But there are different ways that music is known for, and different ways that they can uh, entrepreneur. So that's one thing. Another thing is art. Like I like to draw, but there's so many other ways that paintings are, are formed. Like for example, pencils. There's pens. There's markers. There's sand paintings. There's watercolors, paintings, there's like acrylic painting, which is so many different, there's digital painting, there's painting with a tablet, I mean drawing with a tablet, and painting with a tablet, and there's like, I have a friend in Sweden, and she's like, she draws, and she paints, and she uses feathers and glitter on this great big canvas of paper, and she, and she uses everything, and I think that for me, art would be the hardest, because there's like limitless limitless ways of or how to draw great paintings. You can use anything. You can use like tissues in this to make snow or something on the paper, to glue tissues on paper and make snow. And on digital, there's so many things to learn. And I'm excited because there's so many things you can create with art and drawing and paintings. And I also really like to write. And so does my sister, as you know. But I also want to use that for God's will and to fulfill my purpose. I know that my number one purpose is just sing. That's my number one goal, my number one purpose. But I'm also intending on doing other things as well. Since like, if I was born with the talents of like singing and drawing and dancing. But what, what do you write? You write uh, songs also? Um, um, songs? Uh... I write songs, but I also write stories. I like to okay. write stories. I like stories to read and, and write stories. Stories and uh, poems, no? Yeah, I write poems, okay. but like for now, like for the past, before I read this book, I mostly wrote like my thoughts, like those deep questions yeah. to write them out and show to teachers to help me understand because it's confusing. And they said they liked my writing 
And so they've also supported me with my writing. Are you are they documented how your writings or your topics or the titles you have been writing? Uh, not all of them, but I've documented them. Okay, yeah, because you've got to so that when the time comes to print them, you'll be ready. Mm -hmm. I want to inspire people through different ways. How many of those stories have you written? Do you remember? Or oh, there are too many? Do you remember? <laughs> Um, I, I think there's a little bit too many, but I have to like pick out like the best ones because like, some of them like I was like younger and amateur and over the years the writing style changes and you and you know more of, of the world the more you grow, you know, so so I want to inspire the world through different ways. So if I if I write songs and music more than one type of people can listen to it. If I write books, it can be for adults and children and people my age and if I um, draw, it can be for anyone. I like drawing because you don't have to know a language to understand the picture. <laughs> I like books and singing. And there's complete create creativity. There's even abstract is considered art, even though it doesn't make any sense. The only th and you can convey emotions. And I also want to learn how to write music that moves without any words. I think that's very what hard that? to do. Music that moves without any words. Mm. You know, like violins and different music, different um, instruments put together can like make you feel emotions. And there's not even a word, it's just a title, oh. you know? I, that for me, that's pretty hard to do. But I want to learn how to move without even using words. And if you find, if, you, if I make a composition that moves without making words and then even add words to it, it should be like a double blow. Oh. <laughs> Beautiful, beautiful. So these are the things you are coming, the conclusions you are coming to. Yeah, after. like I had these before, but I just started okay. thinking more about them. Mm -hmm. So what are the books you read? The books I read? Mm -hmm. Or oh, maybe some of the books you read that you want to share with us. Because I know that you read, <laughs> you told me that you read um, Voltaire. Oh. <laughs> And, and some people don't even know who Voltaire is. So I know you have some other people you have read, some other books you have read, or some other authors you have read. Well, like, Voltaire was for a class. Okay. Uh, it was a class we were reading the book Candide. Yeah. And, like, we couldn't have read it without the teacher because we didn't understand that she had to explain and give us the meaning and depths of the story. And, like, I really enjoyed it and it really helped me with my optimistic views. <laughs> How foolishness versus... Uh, um, seriousness. Yeah, seriousness and like a practic practicalism. Yeah. Like, there's an optimism that like maybe angels will come from above and save me, or there's an uh, optimism that like maybe my friends will come through and something realistic rather than something supernatural. But you know what he was trying to do? Voltaire was trying to do is to destroy mysticism and superstitions because people were being superstitious. Wait, waiting on God for miracles mm -hmm. or for some things to just come. They are not using logic. And they will say, no, calm down. Your life is in your hand. Mm -hmm. God has given you all the power to live the right life. So that's what I want to go and do in Africa. I tell people that I want to be the Voltaire of Africa, of Nigerian Christianity, that we should know that God has already given us everything that we need. Uh, to make a living, you know, those things are uh, teaching us, mm -hmm. you know, the things that we already have. So instead of them writing, instead of him writing in form of self-help directly, like I wrote, I wrote mine, he's writing in a creative way, in an entertainment way. Uh, that way it's easier for ordinary people to be able to, you know, understand and laugh and relax and, you know, they get it better. Mm -hmm. Just like moving, in, uh, doing a movie as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The conclusion of Candide was we must all cultivate our own garden. Remember? That's yeah, the last line yeah. of the story. And that's what I also <coughs> talk about also. Cultivate your, uh, uh, your promised land. I call it promised land. Yeah. And like I'm watching a thing about like movies and there are two different kinds of movies. Back then, um, it was like you make a mo they made movies where the characters learn from their own mistakes and you would learn with the characters. But you have to like rewatch the movie and think back and see how the characters have has grown from the beginning of the movie to the end. While nowadays, people in the movie, in the very movie, they tell you. Is that the history of movie uh, movie making? Where was back then you were talking about? Like the beginning of Walt Disney, not okay. that long ago. Mm -hmm. But nowadays, the movies that like become more famous are 
movies that tell you how the character has changed. They don't make you think. They tell you this happened in the story. This is the moral of the story. You know, the character learned this and this and this. But back then, you had to like you could experience with the character and you could understand. But and you had to like think and get your own conclusions from this from the movies. So there are two different ways you can learn. Two different ways of teaching they have in the movies. And nowadays they just tell you outright. Most of them tell you what you have to learn from the books. This is what you have to get in case they're, if, in case they're worried. Uh, in case the the production didn't get it across. But I so that's something I've watched recently. But I want to like. I think it's important that everybody gets what you're trying to say, but you have to like have a little faith that they have to think for their own and get their own conclusions. So it's better when people think by themselves for themselves. Yeah. Because then they become human. Mm -hmm. Then they are not biomasses that just do things according to motion automatically, but they use their mind. Because nobody in life will tell you outright what you have to learn. I mean, like, thankfully we have parents that tell us the values like my parents, but not everybody in life. Like I said, nobody's born with the knowledge. Um, I read different types of books. I read books about um, reformers, great people in history, and also read story books because I want to learn about elements, how to make a story intriguing, but also so that people learn from for their own, uh, for my audience can learn for themselves, but also makes it like a story. So not too much like a telling you, but like, it intrigues you, draws you in, and get, gets you to make your own conclusions. And the character makes his own conclusion, but it doesn't have to be your own conclusion. The character's conclusion in the book and your conclusion can be different. But as long as you both get something out, and there's a, there's a great emphasis on, what, on the right conclusion. So that's to improve your writing style. Yeah. And to be able to make you... But you could also not just be, be doing writing that way. You could actually be doing movies as, as well. The animation after yeah, practice. Animations and production and movie production. Mm -hmm. So you said uh, talking about uh, uh, personalities in history, in history that you said you have uh, studied. What are some of the personalities in history that you that inspired you or that are good for people to know about to learn from to you know to play from? I remember one about um, Nelson Mandela, for example. He changed his whole country. <clears throat> this country was dominated by whites, and even though it was, it was like originally uh, black, and he tried for so long to be peaceful, and he only resorted to, resorted to violence when he did everything he could peacefully, and he he like went through disguises, and he uh, learned how to how to have public speaking, how to appeal more, and even throughout all his troubles in life, he kept the same goal, because that was his sole mission on earth. He, throughout his whole life, you can see that there's a common thread that he was going from one place to another, and throughout all the things that happened, that happened along with, during this time, he got this, this, and this, but through every year of his life, he was going towards the goal, and by the end of his life, he fulfilled it. Even though he spent so much time in jail, even when he was in jail, he wrote books, he didn't stop. And that's one inspiring person from the past that I really looked up to and admired. And there's also Martin Luther King Jr., of course. I also looked up to him and how he, like, I thought about how he, he could have just, like, stayed home. He could have just been, like, one of the many other pastors. He didn't have to, like, go on public, peaceful protest and get people with him. He could have just, like, said that God will do his will in time or anything, but he couldn't ignore this. He went with, what, with, 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 with his calling. God used him. That was his purpose. And we could see that throughout his life. And that's, he, he had a great impact on, uh, the, on civil rights and civil rights movements and giving, getting blacks and whites the same rights. Because he didn't... He didn't like make the Emancipation Proclamation, but if he hadn't been born, if he didn't do what he had to do, I mean, it could be a very different situation for us now. It could have taken a lot much longer, or it might still, it might, the world might, might not be the world that we live in today. Yeah, I want you to remember some other, some other heroes of history uh, that, that you could refer to that reminds you about this book. Uh, who, are the, who are some of the heroes of the book that actually discovered their callings? 
discover their disc discover their gift, they develop them. They actually did these things and they became famous and they are not forgotten. That's why, you know, like we, we said in the beginning, nobody wants to be forgotten. <laughs> well, some of those people that actually, you know, that are good examples for us that we could, apart from Mandela and uh, Martin Luther, or maybe some of the writers also, or, there are different ways that people cemented their memory. So who are some of the people you would like to, uh, to use as an example for us that really did that? Hmm. Um, you know, can we use Einstein? Einstein? Can we use Einstein? Yeah, anyone, anyone. We know, okay, I know, that like at school he wasn't considered smart. He was considered a dunce. He was considered stupid because he was only good in maths and science, but in every other subject he failed. But that's because he had con he wasn't interested in all that stuff. He was only interested <laughs> in maths and science. He was kicked out of school. He failed grades because he didn't do great in other subjects. But like even no matter what anyone told him, even if he didn't think he was smart, he still had a passion for maths and science. And look where he is today. Remember that in that very famous story about creating a light bulb, but he had tried one thousand times, and he he didn't he didn't get that's Thomas Edison. Thomas Edison, yeah. yeah. He, she tried 1,000 times. He didn't, he didn't cry and say, like, it's hopeless. He didn't give up. He didn't get discouraged. He just said, I just found 1,000 ways to not get it. But, but he still got it in the end because of his passion and what he wanted to do. And he, he like, until the day they died, they, they didn't stop doing what they were called to do. Mm -hmm. They kept on working to be better and better and kept them moving forward and forward. Yep. Okay. Uh, so what are your other, you know, interest that you, what are the things that you like to do that uh, you might want to share with us? What are the things that you enjoy doing? What do you do in your leisure hour that, that makes you to grow? In my leisure hour, I like, like I said before, I like to think about deep questions that many people don't like talk about publicly in, with much ease. And I like to talk to people and ask questions about it. So I like to like study psychology if I get the, when I get, I will study psychology, I want to study psychology to understand people more because I am a person and we're all humans and we're all connected in more than, in more ways than one. And I want to help people because I am the caring type of person. And in my leisure time, I also like to, like I said, read and write, but I like to like study um, how movies and films are made because I really enjoy watching them and I do believe they have a great impact in this world today. I also like to read like inspiring stories from other people, but mostly I like to like read inspiring stories from people in my life because it makes it all the more real. How like all these every day God makes little miracles, but they're mind blowing. And if, even from the tiniest miracle that God does, it's proof that God is in your life. You know, <clears throat> it doesn't have to be like a great big thing, but like I get inspiration and strength and courage with interaction with God, interaction with friends, and. Uh, friends support each to support me and I support them and it gives strength and hope and help, helps me believe in myself when I get down or when I like not on my highest or best points. It can come to my parents, it can come to my friends, but just spend time with them to help me grow. And uh, to help me grow, my favorite thing to do is spend time with God. Just like talk to God, think about God, read more of the Bible. If we get closer to him, it's like if I had to, if I if I could get everything in the world, like success and fame and personal fulfillment, all at the cost of like not talking to God, then I'd give it all up if I could just talk to God for the rest of my life. Because <laughs> talking to God and spending time with God is my favorite activity to do in this world. So, uh, in one year or two years' time, finishing uh, high school. Yeah, one and a half years. One and a half years. So, what are you thinking about? I'm thinking about uh, going into an um, art institute, art college, focusing on arts so that I can be able to take theater and different kinds of arts and uh, drawing and dancing and digital art. So, I can expand and, and singing, of course. I can expand in all and as many artistic That's areas precious. as possible. Mm -hmm. And I like to take psychology as well. So I might have to do that on an online class or something, but those are my plans. Then I want to like work on 
um, affecting the world from like a, from the, wherever I am, after college, during college, before college. I always want to work because the more every day I learn something and I want to put it into application and help people. And so, uh, what are some of those? Uh, <laughs> what are some of those areas of help that? Because you need to create the platform to be able to get to people to help them. One of course is music. One of course is writing stories. Stories is really very good because stories they are short to read. They are not too big like and books. They are, like intriguing. But they are intriguing. And uh, so, do you want to? Do, 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 yeah, tell us what are those uh, things that will make you while you are still studying to be affecting people, and after you finish to, to be better. What are those things? The ways you want. Uh, used to affect people like I can like post stories or poems uh, or anything online mm -hmm. and I could like share pe my experiences like as an ins as an aspiring artist or an aspiring actor inspiring writer I could share my difficulties f to give inspiration to other people who are also aspiring to be artists and writers to let them know that they're not alone and when I get to my success I'll show them like I went through these difficulties too nobody got here for free nobody got here uh, fun. No, it, was, it wasn't easy for anyone. So I like to post my journey online to inspire and give hope because I get hope when I found out that like the greatest artists once like didn't draw as well as they do now today. And for my singing, I want to um, give people hope for like all the, for example, as a human, I feel emotions as does every other human. And I want to help people with such, with um, Difficulties that every human goes through, not only Christians and believer, believers, and maybe not every human goes through these things, but I want to help people, give them hope through music. If they can't, for example, afford to buy a book, they can hear it on the radio or in the mall. And if they can't buy a book, they can read, it for, they can read some things for free on the internet. But I want to like, give hope and inspiration to people to keep living, to keep not just living, but to live excitedly because to live for a purpose live for a passion not just live because you're born and you don't know why you're alive or why you're here to give some people some answers if uh why should you wait for college to begin that i'm not waiting for college yeah but you don't i don't see because i uh, i don't see the way you are putting it out there yeah i don't know if you have a facebook page and if you have one i think it's time for you because people are asking right now that you know you should begin to put out some of those your experiences some of your stories some of your songs some of your you know just whatever story anything you want to share what you've learned or quotations or books you read you know any just your inspirations on daily basis you know it would be a good idea to have um a facebook page and that you that you can give to people i think you have facebook already yeah you could give to people but then you have to monitor it and begin to work I mean, maybe you are, that's a private one you have. But maybe you want to have one, or open another one, a more public one, and then use that one to give inspiration to people. What you're already saying now, and using all those instruments, your poems, your writings, your stories, your inspirations, your challenges, your uh, experiences, you know, and, you know, but just make sure that you put it under a system so that two, three times a day, Whenever you have break between whatever you're doing, you could go and write something and comment, you know, reply people and give them purpose and make sure that instead of them being taken away by some other strange and unfruitful activities that they're doing, they will have, uh, they will have a purpose. They will have, um, you know, you will be able to direct them to how you are thinking and form uh, their value system. Because we are still coming back, and for everybody's information, uh, Paris, I mean, Pearl is going to have a birthday on the 13th. So I think we'll work on getting Pearl and Zoe to open um, a public uh, Facebook page uh, so that they will be, we will announce that on the 13th uh, when they come, when we congratulate uh, Pearl come here to talk to us about her life uh, on the 13th, that's on Friday, this Friday. And uh, then Zoe also will come. So, but before then, two of you have to open your Facebook uh, pages, and then you know, then from there, you people could go and register because people want to get to know how to find you now, and what name will you use for that, and to begin to you know uh, follow you. So, um, 
Yeah, what do you think your generation needs, right? The young people like you, or yeah, what would you like to tell your generation? I think <clears throat> maybe the older generation. I think, but anyhow, I think they need hope for the future. I think everybody is like unsure of the future and of the present, and like, what's the point of living in this world? There's a lot of apathy, a lot of like. There's a lot less optimism, a lot more cynicalism in this world. And I think, like, I'm always sure that it's going to be okay, and I'm always sure, that in, and my, my future is, is bright, and it's something worth to live for. But I feel that many people are, like, unsure of their life, and their life mostly see life through gray lenses. So I think they need, like, hope and, like, surety and the truth that, like, God has a plan for them, and he's, he has a seat for them waiting in heaven, and he loves them, and he loves them abundantly, unconditionally, despite what they might be going through or what they have done in the past. I think that's what the world needs now. Yeah. Uh, someone is saying, Zoe Lajadara is a Facebook account. You can send a request. I think that's maybe a private. She will tell us the right one on Friday. So that might be our own private one, but she will have one for the for everybody that she wants to use as a page, as an inspirational page to other people. What's your assessment of our world right now? What do you think about the whole world? And uh, yeah, what's your assessment of what's going on in the world politically, in different continents, and uh, and what are your wishes and uh, predictions for the world? My mom and my sister and I were talking about like how the world is becoming more aggressive and more violent over the years and how morality has been falling. How many people this year have died of terrorist attacks or just random attacks that they shouldn't have died that way. And how like my mom said the Christians are becoming more aggressive and not as peaceful as they usually are, like throwing out pastors from their own churches. And I think that like we should we should raise our morals, like like I said, the set of beliefs that every person should have. We should raise the national set of beliefs, the country's set of beliefs, not just our country, like every country's. The world, we have to remember that war is not the answer. War doesn't bring peace. Ignorance is not freedom. We have to, we have to remember, like America was originally God's nation, but like now it's like there's a country that's, that's known like Sin City or something. We have to... We have to remember that we want peace and we can't just let, we can't be animals and just kill whenever we feel angry at the cost of our lives. We can't just let emotions rule us. We have to think and be above because we can all be better than we all are because we all have brains. We can all control ourselves. We can all choose to make better decisions. So I think that's what we need. Who is your favorite writer or? I don't have a favorite writer right now or author because if, if I have just a, read all of them to get yeah. to learn something from all of them right? mm -hmm. yeah I don't want to be like two on one thing have a wide yeah, that's what I like to people ask me for my favorite book and I say I don't know because I just gain from everybody I gain knowledge from everyone okay okay let me see if this if people have any questions let me see if there are some questions here for you There are so many things written here. I think you have to go and read these things yourself. Okay. And, uh, and go and respond to them. Okay, somebody is saying here, most of 16-year-olds are more concerned about the mundane things of life, like hair, make, or makeup, or Snapchat, or boyfriends, and things like that. 
But looking at you today gives a lot of hope. What do you say to that about people, you know, about what young people are doing? Let's be focused. I mean, like, it's obviously very natural for people about age to be, like, concerned about their hair and makeup. And they're not bad things. Just, like, depending on how much focus and how much attention you put to these things. Because like, everybody, I'm sure, everybody knows the important things of life. And they know that makeup is an important, unless they want to be, like, a makeup artist or something. Mm -hmm. But I think they just, like, try to keep themselves occupied. Oh, okay. Try to keep themselves occupied from the real things of life. Maybe. Could it be because they don't know their purpose? Yes. Or are they just too lazy to work on it? Maybe they'll work on it later, you know, whenever later comes. <laughs> so why is it that you are not concerned about those things? That's, I think, what they're asking. I mean, I never really was too much about makeup because I'm already beautiful. And makeup helps the already beautiful to become, to look a little bit different. But I like my face. I look at it every morning and every evening and my hair my is like I like it too attachments and like all these things they're more like entertainment and they're interesting but they're entertainment and entertainment is not ever supposed to take a majority of someone's life or time it's just supposed to be like relaxed to them so like a day at the spa you know like some it's, it's just for fun it's not anything serious or important unless you want to like make have a living but uh, living off the entertainment, like you want to help braid hair or be a fashion designer or anything, maybe that's, and then it's important. But like, if if I listen to music a lot, because I want to be a singer, and mm. I read a lot of books, I mean, not a lot of, I like to read books, because I want to be a writer, and I watch movies because I like to be an actor and all that stuff. So I just focus on what I like. So the idea, the, so what has, what I say is that what has helped you in not being like, you know, distracted by those little things, empty things in life, is because you have, you understand purpose and you are living for purpose, for a greater purpose. Uh, well, that might be something to communicate and to help other people, young people to discover their purposes and to help them to also avoid this kind of emptiness because prob you know you probably know that not everybody uh, had the opportunity to grow up in such a family like you <laughs> and uh, so somebody needs to tell them and sometimes it's even much more effective for them to listen to a young person like them you know telling them how to live than their parents or their their teachers uh, yeah, is that something you like to do? Yeah, I'd like to give it. I'd like to give advice to people my age, people who never got to like look, to be raised properly. I like to like help them. Say it's not too late to learn, and you're not too early to learn either. I like to teach them like some secrets of life, some keys of life that could help them to to become better people, just so, to like be above the normal people, and like to to let them think more rationally and logically. And like it makes more sense. It makes more sense than spending your life doing nothing. Because you know every day is a day that you won't. So uh, you've read how, how many of that book have you read? And what do you think about Pastor, uh, that Pastor Sunday's books? I read a few. I haven't read a lot. Yeah, mention, you mention some of them you've read. Like money won't make you rich. Um, who am I? Why am I here? And um, why bad things happen to good people, the dedication to Miles Monroe. And I read one, another one, I don't remember which one it was, but I read those three, I mean four. The, um, I think the other one was like money, uh, no, time is life or something, yeah, like that, life. that one. And I think that that is very good. Uh, before I even started reading this book, I knew that like this wouldn't be mundane. Because that has a way of keeping his um, audience intrigued. Like I know that Dad puts examples in the books, and every book, almost everything he has, has an example and has facts, like scientific facts and everything, studies. So it really convinces you, and lets you know this is legitimate. It's not just like opinions, and it's not just a hoax. 
And it's and you know that like he's writing this with the intention of helping you, not with the intention of telling you how smart he is or anything. So that's what I think his books they're helpful. I mean that's their purpose to help. Well, for people who are wondering where they could get the books, if you are in the West, in UK, US, you can get any of my books on Amazon. So just go to Amazon if you are in UK or if you are in America or anywhere in the Western world. Just go to Amazon uh, and write Sunday at the Leisure. That's my name. And uh, you, my books will come up and you'll be able to get as many of them as possible. And uh, also, yep, yeah, that's it. And uh, if you are in Africa, the, I see the telephone number of, uh, you know, Shioma there, of Bode. So you have a lot of telephone numbers here uh, that will be helpful to you. Uh, now, the, I, we have a few people here, but they are mostly Russian speaking. But still, let's find out. Maybe they will have questions for you. We have one lady for sure who speaks, who speaks English. Будет какой-то вопрос к Зои? Зададите, и я переведу. Можно по-русски задать, а я переведу. You have any question for Zoe? You okay? Вопрос будет к Зои? Без камеры, да? Без камеры? Я на тебе не покажу, если ты Вообще не снимать. Не снимать? Нет. Ага, я понял. Окей. Uh, Monica is asking Zoe, uh, what are the keys to self development? What will you tell young people about self development? First of all, it's easier to self develop on things that you're interested on. I mean, when every time I find out a new musical artist, I always go to look up their biography, how they got to be famous, what brought um, like their past. Because I'm interested in this stuff in like musical in music. So I suggest to start on like your passions and what you like, not just like empty interests, but like something you're willing to work for. And like, if you want to, and if you want to be better at something, then I suggest you do that. You start developing that too. If you want to like, if you're on the track team, and you want help with like how to like run and like with a help with a better stamina. You can like look it up and how to like run longer and better, faster without getting tired as quickly, and practice because it's something that you want, something that you're interested in. I recommend you start with that, with those things, because like it's a drive. Like I said, like if you have a goal that you're really interested in and your heart's in it, then your body creates energy. Like you get excited. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. So let's assume that people who buy these books, this particular book, what is your expectation? What do you want to happen to them after they get this book, after they finish? What's your the greatest desire for people who believe you today and want to get the book and read it? I want them to find out their purpose and start moving to them towards them the day or at least the very week they finish the book or even have the book because it's possible to even even the smallest step is a, is a step closer to the goal i want them to like spend time with god talking with god over their goal over their plan or the purpose and like god won't give all the answers immediately but god will be on their side and i want them to start taking steps towards the goal like the very week or like uh, the very like the very day they finish the book, she was, uh, the very day you finish the book, start thinking about it. But the very week, like start doing some of the things that the book suggests, like making a list or those practical tests. And they have the book has quizzes to test you and help you find out like what your purpose is and where you need help. So I, my greatest wish is they take it to heart and they actually want to make it a goal to fulfill their purpose in their life. Someone else is asking. So what are the best ways to overcome laziness? How do you overcome it and what do you advise young people? How can they overcome laziness? Um, a great way is determination. It's a very, very important thing. 
<coughs> something my mom makes me do is like make a list of a plan of uh, make a plan of what I want to do today, right? Wake up in the morning, brush my teeth, eat, like play, and then what I'm gonna do this. And so I um, usually make a schedule for myself. And if I get carried away, I just think about usually the thing that I want to do, like something that I like to do, like draw or like read a book. And like I just think about how much I love doing that thing. How much, th how, like if, if I want to read a book, like I'm at an interesting spot. So like I want to finish the spot. And if I want to draw, I want, like I think about how I feel every time I finish drawing a drawing or every time I draw and think mm. about how captivated I get in it. Mm. And that usually gets me to overcome, to stop what I'm doing, to just go and like devote myself to doing whatever I have to do. So you think about the gains, about the pleasure at the end of that activity, rather than thinking about the difficulty mm -hmm. that it takes to do it. The difficulty only like increases the laziness. Okay. Well, that's it. You people don't have questions. It's been a long day for us. Yes, of course. It's been a long day for us. Uh, for Zoe also, we've been in, this, in the church since morning. <laughs> uh, they actually went to the church before me. Uh, so, like, when I was doing the morning program, they had gone to the church. So they've been outside till now. And, uh, yeah, I don't know what else you would like to talk to about, but uh, I like all those things. Uh, Zoe spoke about her calling, about the different types of music and drawing and uh, all those people, the other things that she's studying. And I think we've really learned a lot. And uh, so you have to get your Facebook page ready. Mm -hmm. And maybe after that, you have to go and do a blog. But let's start with the Facebook. And so that people already now want to join. And they want to uh, begin to glean from your wisdom on daily basis. Every day they want to come to the page and hear, hear some of your ideas, some of your thoughts, quotations, and lessons. So thank you so much, uh, uh, Zoe. Good job. I think you will have to read the comments later. And uh, yeah, good job. Somebody said they read the book three times and they could, didn't get from it all these lessons that you mentioned today. So good job. But um, we'll meet again with Zoe and, uh, and Pearl on Friday, that will be Paul's birthday, and then they will come back and Zoe will say a few words about, you know, being, having a sister, and then, uh, you know, you always, you know, and then she will also share with us what's her Facebook page where you could all go to see what she's doing, and I think Paul will also share her own page, and uh, you could begin to follow them from there. Uh, thank you very much, everybody. Have a wonderful day. Bye. I'll be back tomorrow morning. Of course, I'll be back tomorrow morning. Bye.